And we have Jonathan Kaminga, who didn't play at all in the first half. He stayed ready in the third quarter. It's a boy, 6-6 six six with 13 points. But, J.K., I'll start with this. Welcome to Pulse Game Live. Chris Muller, Festus Azili, Avante Hill. What was the message at halftime after that lackluster first half from Steve Kerr? No, I, I couldn't hurry. I couldn't hurry. What was the message at halftime after falling behind by 7 and falling behind by 11 midway through the third quarter there from Steve Kerr? I still can't hear you the right way, though. It's all good. Talk about your game, J.K. Just talk. I mean, uh, just going through all this game, I find out that I wasn't playing right when I got on the bench. And, I mean, you know, as a player, uh, you always got to stay ready. And I feel like I was patient. I was being ready because uh, I knew at some point, because the way the game was going, I knew at some point I was going to get my name called. So I was, I, was just, I was just staying ready, and things happened after that. J.K., what was your mentality when you got into the game tonight? I mean, uh, I had the same mentality as always, just coming out here, uh, playing for my team, helping them win. Uh, that, that wasn't the case going uh, when the game started, but I kept the same mentality, and I just came out here and finished the, the game the right way. J.K., you've won four in a row at home now. What from these last few games can you take on the road Friday to Oklahoma City with you? JK, yes, JK, you guys won four in a row at home now. What can you take on the road to get some wins? You go to uh, Oklahoma City on Friday. I mean, just definitely bringing uh, the energy that the second unit came out there and brought. I mean, from the start to the end, and I feel like we have great players and we can't finishing the game. So definitely on the road, I feel like that's what we need. JK, safe travels to Oklahoma City. Best of luck against the Thunder Friday night. Yes, sir. Thank you. Over time, Jonathan Kamiga, 6-6 six six from the floor, 16 minutes, 44 seconds. Remember, he got inserted into the game midway through the third quarter with the Warriors down 11. He never left the court after that 13 minutes, 13 points in those 16 minutes and 44 seconds. You've got to feel like, Fezzi, he's going to see some minutes in OKC against Phoenix and for the first year of the future after a performance like tonight. I think what the game tonight taught me is Steve Kerr cannot afford to not play the young guys on this team. That first half left a lot to a, a lot to be desired, didn't leave a lot to be desired because the Warriors were beat in points in the paint. They were beat on, on the board, second chance points. The only category that they won was the free throw category. And I'm sure you were not happy about that because we're down by six to the Portland Trailblazers. I said before the game, that the Trailblazers are getting better defensively. When they hold a team to below 110 points per possession, they usually win those games. So defensively, they've really come into the games and imposed their will. For the Warriors tonight, going into a game like this, you had to play with a lot of energy. It seemed like the Portland Trailblazers were really dictating the pace of the game. When you had the bench coming, Moses Moody was the one bright spot in the first half, came in, got some layups. The Warriors ended up winning the points in the paint game. That was thanks to, to Dario Saris. That was thanks to Jonathan Kaminga. And that was thanks to Steph Curry as well. But the bench really came in and, and made their impact felt in this game. And we saw that in the Clipper game, in that loss. And I felt like they played a really good game. They, they came out with a loss. Tonight, in my mind, was a little bit of a step backwards from a, from a pace of play standpoint. Uh, when Jonathan Kaminga came in in the third quarter, the first time he received playing time, immediately changed the, the pace of the game, was on attack mode was 6-6 six for six from the field, was attacking the paint. Uh, and as Festus said, I think moving forward, and look, they have had injuries and guys out of lineup. But I, I still believe when you have your three core players that are in their 15th year, their 13th year, and their 12th year, they need support by these young players. And they have to incorporate them with Steph, Draymond, and, and uh, Clay, not always playing separate. Uh, so tonight, I felt like the young players bailed them out. Yeah. And you think about the, the Portland Trailblazers. If they're not a very successful team, but at every single position, they've got length, mm -hmm. youth, athleticism. So each and every night, every NBA team has that pretty much that, that advantage over the Warriors starters. So Kaminga, Moody. Um, for Jemski. Jemski, they all need to get incorporated into this lineup as soon as possible. Kaminga starts playing in that third quarter. Warriors down 11, 77-66. They go on a 10-0 run and get back into the basketball game. Kaminga's kind of the, the, the story uh, yeah. of the night, uh, I guess. I mean, he clearly wasn't in the rotation going into the night. What went into that decision? Why did you decide to go to him? And what did you think of him the last 17 minutes? He, uh, he was great. He was uh, the key to the game. Uh, he stayed ready. He was out of the rotation just because uh, it's hard to play 10 guys. And, uh, you know, frankly, um, 
you know, Brandon and, and uh, Moses have earned uh, the minutes they're getting. And um, we obviously needed him. You know, this, the, the game um, called for JK um, just with Portland's youth and athleticism. We needed to be able to, uh, to match that and be able to score against their switches. And um, so I was so happy for JK uh, that he stayed ready and, um, you know, came in and produced the way he did. How much does this shift your thoughts on, on him being in or out of the rotation moving forward? Uh, I think the um, – Every night's going to be different um, with this team. That's what I'm finding out. Um, you know what we what we need each night seems to be different depending on the matchup, depending on how the game's going, and um, so it's um, it's hard to predict what's going to happen each night. It's also hard to play ten or eleven guys. So um, I, I don't think we know. You know, I, I think I said it to you guys last week. I mean, we have a, a, a deep team, a uh, deep roster, but we don't have roster clarity in terms of. Um, you know who's who's going to play every single night, and so everybody's just got to stay ready. And I'm really proud of J.K. that that he did that, and he was really the the, the reason we won. Steve, how would you describe what you saw before late third quarter and into the fourth? Well, I thought Portland was fantastic defensively. We couldn't get anything going in the first half. They had ball pressure on every single guy uh, who touched the ball. So they took us out of all of, all of our stuff. Um, at one point, I looked, we had uh, 12 assists and 15 turnovers, you know, mid-third, late third. That's not like us. Uh, so I give Portland the credit. They, um, they have, they have a, a young, hungry team, and they controlled uh, most of the game. And then, obviously, Steph took over, and then uh, Jonathan really changed the game. You have now the next four games away from home, and obviously playing at home gives you that upper hand with your fan base. It hypes up your guys. How are you guys planning on going away basically for the next four games and trying to keep this momentum going, keep the wins yeah, before it's really, coming back. It's, it's really just about the process and, and you know, our, our goals each game, our focus. Um, we're really focusing on defending without fouling so that the game can keep going, which plays into our favor. And, uh, and then taking care of the ball. And uh, Portland forced us into a lot of turnovers tonight, but we did a better job uh, the fourth quarter of uh, – of uh, taking care of it and executing. So um, when we go out on the road, those are the things we focus on. And we're playing really good teams, so it's going to be a difficult trip. Steve, it feels like these athletic teams have given you problems all year. Do, do you feel like when you go against a team going in now, you you kind of know we just got to we got to play our maybe our athletic lineup or whatever the case may be. I mean, I think that's a that's a great point, um, and we talk about it every day. Um, you know, we we I'm, I've really been um, patient and hoping to get our first unit, you know, from the last couple of years um, into a good groove. It's just easier to play and to coach uh, when everybody knows exactly where they fit in. And uh, role players, uh, it's easier to play a role when, you know, the, uh, there's kind of a set rotation and, you know, the, the stars are playing well and all that. So everything, you know, the puzzle kind of fits. So to be honest, the puzzle hasn't fit this year. And we've had a lot of guys playing well, but um, – we we may have to think about you know moving the the starting lineup around game to game depending on who we're facing. I'd still prefer to get something solid, but um, we haven't really established uh, anything this year, and and uh, you know we're a quarter of the way through, so there's definitely uh, you know a lot of thought that's going to have to go into this. Steve, I believe that you guys had 15 turnovers, 12 assists, first three quarters, but then eight assists, only two turnovers that final fourth quarter. What really tightened up over the final 12 minutes? I thought Jonathan uh, loosened the game up with his uh, scoring inside. You know, they were switching everything, and they've got a lot of really long, uh, strong athletes. And uh, so the first three quarters, we were, um, you know, having to um, deal with that athleticism and pressure. And... Um, when J.K. came in, it loosened up the pressure because he was able to get to the rim and score. Steve, that, that early part of the fourth where Dario had a three and then uh, also a layup just to get you guys close, how, I mean, to get some momentum there, how important was that early stretch of the yeah, fourth? Yeah, that was big. You know, Steph really, um, you know, got us going there, um, you know, late third, mid-third mid and late third, and then um, 
uh, I, this, the next group came in and really held down the fort. Um, did a good job. Dario was great, as we talked about. JK was the story of the game, and it's still still the ultimate luxury to be able to bring Chris Paul in to uh, you know to run the that group. So uh, they did a really good job. Steve Jonathan's obviously been up and down. Had some really good games and some really games where he kind of disappeared. What? And you've now had some really good games and some really games where he kind of disappeared. What? And you've talked in the past about rebounding as one of the keys. Yeah. But what do you need to see? What What did you see tonight that maybe you didn't see in some recent games beyond the the obvious scoring? I mean, is there something about the way he plays, the patience when he has a good night? Yeah, I mean, he's a, he's a young player, so young players are generally up and down, and you know we're looking for consistency. Um, it's um, you know it's about decision making. It's about recognizing you know when to when to shoot, when to move it. Um, certain games are going to favor him more tonight, definitely with all. The the switching um, and the way he was able to get to the rim. Um, other games with different matchups don't favor him as much, and, and he struggled in some of those matchups. So this is not unusual for a young player to, to go through ups and downs. And for us as a team, we just have to figure out each night what we need um, to win. Steve, you mentioned about just having patience with the starting group, like really wanting to get that that starting five that had been so good for you guys in the five man lineups, and we know all that from the years past. How do you balance just the the patience with that versus the hey, we're at the quarter mark of the season, we have to get going, yeah. like how, and and essentially when you make a choice like that, what it does to people's right. confidence and egos. That's coaching. <laughs> That's the job right there. It's, um, you know, we got all kinds of data. We can look at the analytics. We can say, well, we should play this lineup more, uh, that lineup more. But you factor in everything. You factor in the human being. You factor in injuries. You factor in rhythm. Um, you know, I always feel that I want my players to know I have great confidence in them. And so I'm going to give them, um, you know, a long rope, especially the guys who have, you know, been there, done that. Um, and so, um, you know, that's that's the deal. We're 10 and 11. We got to keep going and see where this season goes. But, um, you know, we we have not found any clarity yet in that in the question you're um, answering. So I'm trying to keep my guys going, keep them confident, give everybody a chance, and hopefully, things uh, become more clear as we go. You were down, I think, six with like 5.30 left or so, and you went to that timeout, and it seemed like that was the point you kind of had to choose your closing lineup tonight. Uh, why did you go with the kind of the five you, you decided? Well, J.K. was playing great, and he was guarding Simons, so, um, you know, we wanted to stay with him. And then, um, you know, Steph Clay, Draymond Wiggs, it just felt like uh, we needed those guys out there. I mean, obviously... You know, Steph's an automatic, um, but I thought Draymond was playing great, um, and we needed you know Wiggs's athleticism, and and I always have confidence that that you know Clay's gonna make a shot, and uh, he did. He made a big big three, and uh, you know so every night, like I said, every night's gonna be a little different, and we don't know who's gonna close, but we got to figure it out as a coaching staff every you know every game, game to game. Full circle back to Slater's first question, but JK didn't check in until pretty late in the third quarter. So I'm just curious, why was it in that moment of the game you you decided that you guys needed to look at something a little bit different? Uh, just the nature of the game, the switching, the athleticism that Portland has. Uh, we were struggling with their pressure, and uh, we we weren't scoring around the basket. So um, just the way they were playing, it, it seemed like a good. Uh, game for JK to get out there and um, you know with the switching be able to get the ball near the rim and, and go up and score the way you know maybe other, other other guys couldn't so that was the decision and then his defense was really good on on Simon so um, he played well and we just stayed with him but, but for, like, checking in that late into the game like, mm -hmm. trying to see if everyone else would kind of work their way out of it or uh, it's like I said, it's hard to play 10 people. Um, you know, you're, when you're trying to get guys rhythm, um, you know, it's kind of nine um, is, uh, is, a, is a way to try to get everybody rhythm. And he was just the odd man out um, to start the game. But he did what every young player has to learn to do, which is stay ready and, and um, make the most of your opportunity. And he did that. Beyond putting Kaminga in at that point, did that timeout feel sort of urgent or desperate? I mean, you had fallen down 11, 4.45 to go in the third quarter. Did it sort of feel like to you that, OK, if we don't put something together now, it's you're running out of time, yeah, I guess? Yeah, it, it, it felt like 
I mean, it was an obvious timeout to take. You know, we were reeling, and um, so it, it, you know, it wasn't. I didn't give some great speech in there. It was, you know, it was more just this is where you take a timeout and get everybody settled and remind them, you know, it's three or four possessions. That's all. So we needed to uh, buckle down defensively and rebound. We did a much better job rebounding in the second half. I don't think they had one offensive board in the second half. They had 11 in the first. So, um, you know, there's the NBA game is so long. There's so much time. Uh, you have to play well for so long to win. Um, but it, by the same token, if you're playing poorly, um, there's always a lot of time to get back in it, and, and that's what tonight felt like. Thanks. Hey, Jonathan, for, for us uh, for us mere mortals, what, what does it look like up there, that dunk? Like, what was it like? What's the air like? Uh, she, uh, I don't know. I think he always happened. just that connection with me and Drummond. It always happened, like most of the time. It felt great to be up there, though. So. Coach Kerr said you were the story of the game, obviously. You came in pretty late into the game, but gave him an obvious spark. Just kind of take me through what that was like for you going in, feeling like you – did you feel like you were going in late, or did you feel like you needed to go in and give the team a spark? I mean, doing whatever I just did out there, I mean, that's – that's our job, young guys. I mean, you see Moses, you see the things he's been doing lately, you see in BP. And obviously the things I just went out there and did for the team. I mean, we're the young guys. I mean, we're supposed to help our team, bring energy in. And I knew somehow it was going to be me, either me, Moses, or anybody uh, that was going out there and lift the team up. And obviously I ended up being a person. And so, I mean, that's all that matters. Hey, Jonathan, yeah. along those lines, how do you just stay ready? Um, you, you may be in the rotation one night and not, not as much um, necessarily the next or depending on matchups. And do you just have this frame of mind that says, I'm, I'm going to be ready whenever, whenever my number is called? I mean, it, yeah, the first time it happened, I mean, so obviously I know what it is whenever I go in a game. I mean, it's not the first time. So if it was the first time, I'll be asking my, myself, like, what do I need to do? So I actually know what I need to do when I haven't played and when we really needed to get through that type of harm. I mean, that's obviously what the young guys out there supposed to be doing. But I mean, I'm always ready. So regardless, anytime if my name haven't been called, but like I always say, I'm a professional. I know my job, I know my role. All that matters is just go out there and finish the job. Have you grown into how you learned to, to do that? I mean, definitely. I'm going to keep it real, definitely, because my first year, I really, I was just surprised, but it's just a learning experience. I mean, we all, we all go through that phase. Uh, so I'm obviously, I, I obviously grew out there and I know what it is, so that don't phase me at all. Were you surprised when you learned? I mean, you, you wouldn't be in the rotation? I mean, I wasn't, I don't know, I don't know. I was just, I was just chilling on the bench. I was just being a good teammate and bringing the energy up in my teammate play and just encouraging him. I didn't really know that I wasn't going in, but obviously I ended up going in, but I didn't really know anything, so. I wasn't really surprised. Generally, how do you feel like you've been playing, you know, the first however many games this season? I feel like I've been playing good. I mean, like I said, it's a deep team. You don't know what's going to happen. It's not all that matters is just be happy for whoever playing good out there. So that's obviously what I'm, I was out there doing. I was happy the way everybody was playing, Moses, BP, and just the rest of the guys. You knew when you came in, you're probably going to be guarding Simons. How much does, when you get to guard a guy like that, how much does that kind of get you going and, and just turn your, comp your competitive juices up? I mean, uh, definitely going out there without playing for a long period of time. I mean, I'm still trying to figure it out. I'm still cold. I haven't warmed yet. I mean, just going through that time, 
when did I go in the game? Third quarter or something like that? I mean, at that time, I knew I wasn't really playing, but obviously that one up and down, I'm still young, so you're going to take me just one up and down to get a little warm. And knowing that my life on the line, I got to go guard the best player. Uh, it's, just a, it's just a mental and a focused thing that I really needed to do. I really needed to just look at myself and like, yo, this is the moment. Just go out there and play free and you know what to do. I mean, that's pretty much what it's, what's it been. Do you relish playing against a team like that that's young and athletic and long? I mean, it seems like that's the kind of game. I mean, as Steve said, that the Warriors needed you to match that. I mean, to play against a team like that that is so athletic. You, I, you, I could play against any team. It don't matter. Right. Yeah. But you enjoy that particularly to play against? I enjoy playing against anybody. Uh, along the lines of that question, when you're watching in the first half, how are you sort of seeing what Portland is doing and how you can make your impact? What, what were you noticing about the game and, and maybe putting in the back of your head as you went in what you could do to, to make a change? I mean, it was just definitely like watching how everything was going. Uh, and just my mentality was just going out there and cut the water off. Uh, and I feel like it had to start with somebody. Uh, and I'm not going to say that went out there and just switch everything by myself because everybody was on the floor, everybody was playing. Uh, just going out there, adding a little piece that was missing uh, to give us this win. I feel like just going throughout the game, I was just watching, like, if I get a chance to go in, what I need to do. And obviously, just sitting on the bench and watching the game is more different than being in the game. And that's what kind of helped me to go through that game. What do you take from going into the game? And once you got in the game, you really didn't really get a break. I mean, you only missed like one second the rest of the game once you got in. What do you take away from that, that you stayed in the game the rest of the way? I mean, <clears throat> I'm always ready. Uh, I work every day to stay in shape. Uh, that's not the question. I mean, like I said, chances like that, you don't just let it go. And regardless of if you're tired or no, you just keep going. So. I think that's what I went out there and did. Anything else? Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right, Steve Kerr mentioned about mentioned the young guys, right? And Pajimski and Moody said that they earned their minutes. And JK's got to earn his minutes, but he was proud of them the way he stayed ready. How does JK earn a permanent spot in the rotation? I mean, you have to keep approaching the game. Jonathan Kaminga has to keep approaching the game like he did tonight. He came in, there was an instant energy for this Warriors team offensively. They went on a 10-0 run immediately when he came in the game when they needed a bucket. And so with him coming in the game, running the floor, getting easy layups, he's an athlete, so you saw the dunk earlier. Things like that for him are really important to this Warriors team because we talked about this in the pregame. This team has the lowest dunks. I think it's the lowest dunks in the NBA right now. So that is a, just a, a reflection of the athleticism of this team right now. So he is a guy who is an athlete that this team needs to defend people, to defend the, the other team's best mm -hmm. players as well. So his impact is going to be needed for him. It's about coming in and showing that every night. Yeah, and the NBA in general is a, a much younger league than it was just five years ago. So with youth becomes speed, athleticism. These players have incredible length. That's why I said what I said about Andrew Wiggins. He's the one guy that can match up one-on-one -on -one pretty much with any player athletically in the league. Jonathan Kaminga is another. Uh, and this this Warriors team has really, you know, won hung banners and won championships with total team play and rhythm and flow, but with pace of play. Last year, they were second in the league in pace. Mm -hmm. This year, they're 13th or 14th. That has to change. When you play small, the one thing you have to do every night is dictate the pace of play. Uh, Portland was able to play at their pace for the most of, of the game. Uh, the last five minutes, Steph took over. But really, the, the deciding factor in this game was Jonathan Kaminga sitting the entire first half, coming in with a clear head uh, and really putting his imprint on his game. So you ask, what can he do? Right. That's that's a good step forward. And with that small ball lineup, you see him play the entire fourth quarter. Him and Draymond Green on the back line. I like he played that. Played a small ball I like five. I do like that a lot. And I like the way Moses Moody has played the Stay last three ready, nights. So you don't got to get ready, no Moody. Doubt. 15 points a game, 48, 48 and a half percent from the floor and 30 percent from three. But he's got some great looks there. He's standing by with the pride of Yale University, Zena Kata. 
Moses got the win at home, feels good, especially against a team that's been young, long, athletic. I think what is a team that the Warriors have struggled with against this season. What allowed you guys to pull out the win against this team? Uh, resilience, you know, we went down a little early, uh, came together as a team, figured out what we need to do, and we did it. Yeah, and then when you think about your performance, when you came into the game in the first quarter, I saw you kind of jumping around, getting a little bounce, you know, you've been having a really great stretch with your games and, and your, be your ability to come in and make some plays. Talk to me about what you wanted to get done tonight mm -hmm. as far as being able to have an impact on this game. Yeah, uh, I mean, sitting on the bench early, I could see we needed that spark more than anything. Um, you know, we... They were, they were running around, picking up full court, getting rebounds. So, I mean, we got guys that can do that, too. So I just felt, I felt like that was, my, that was my role. Now, speaking of guys that can do that, too, hustle points, I want, you, I want to play a little game with you. Right now, there are two Warriors players that are top 10 and charges taken in the league. Can you name the two? Um, I'm going to go me. No? Me? Name the two. Uh, me and BP. <laughs> Close. Draymond first, Draymond. and then BP. Ah, okay. But you are quickly rising up the ranks. Okay. This seems like it's a really important thing to you. I remember you saying that you used to get a dollar mm -hmm. for every single charge you took. Yeah. What's the motivation now? Um, I mean, you know, that was kind of the foundation of it. So, you know, a lot of times, too, I got, like, you'll be guarding somebody and you're guarding them really well, and they genuinely knock you over like, yeah. when they <laughs> run into you like that sometimes. But, uh, I mean... As a, def as a defender, there's only so much you can do, rather like the rule book and you know what, what, what's a foul, what's not a foul. So sometimes you just got to take what they give you and that's the charge. I love the, the downhill, this is like a scouting thing. You knew Scoot Henderson was going downhill, getting in front of him, getting that charge. I do also want to ask you, give me a little bit of insight on how you feel about Jonathan Kaminga's performance tonight, knowing that he came in in the third quarter and was able to go six from six from the field and really attack Portland. What did you see out there of your teammate? Yeah, yeah, like I said, we got guys that can play like that, too, and he's one of those guys, you know, he's athletic, just like they was, uh, putting, a lot of, uh, putting a lot of pressure on the rim, mm -hmm. you know, high flyer, you saw the lobby caught, um, just active, we got, um, we, got, we, got a, we got a unit, I mean, we got different guys within the, within the team, you know, that can bring different things to the table, and he definitely brought his. 1,000%, uh, and you did, too, your deflections, your athleticism, your length, you definitely saw that on display tonight. Congratulations, enjoy the win. For sure, thank you. No problem. I don't think we've talked to you since uh, you know you missed a few games. How are you feeling, and what kind of was really the issue you were you were dealing with? Um, it's a little nerve issue in my leg when I fell after I got that steal and sack, but it felt good to get back out there and play tonight, for sure. Felt good. Felt good to win. <laughs> what do you think about uh, what J.K. did once he got in the game tonight? Man, that was huge. You know, um, our team, we've just been sort of up and down all season with different guys in and out the lineup. You know, uh, we missed Dre for some games, missed Steph for two games, had everybody in sack, and me and GP go down. So it's just sort of been next man up. And uh, I think J.K. showed a, a great deal of professionalism, you know, and not playing early and coming in, he changed the whole game. Did you hear uh, what the commissioner said today about you and Scott Foster? Did you hear catch, catch those comments? What did he say? He's talked to y'all, and you know he thinks you guys are gonna be professional and yada yada yada. And he said he talked to us. Yeah. Nah. He said there's been talks. Yeah. Nah, ain't nobody called me since since all that happened. Did you, you did you expect? No, the lead. Yeah, I mean, usually sometimes they'll call, interview you, something like that. Ain't nobody texted, called, or nothing since it happened. So. Did you actually see what he, the, the the comments he made? Yeah, I got a family. <laughs> <laughs> I got a whole family. So you when know, you saw them, the what was your reaction when you saw that? You're like, uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I was, I haven't talked to Adam. Byron, nobody, you know what I mean? I talked to Byron, but I had to call him. He didn't call me. So, yeah. I don't, I don't know. It's weird. You, yeah. Do you expect anything to change? I don't know. Ain't nothing ever changed. You know what I mean? As far as that. 
but he said, what did he say? We're going to talk about it? Well, we did. It sounds like he said that you guys, there's been talks. Nah, I missed that. Yeah, I missed that. But I don't I'm, know if he was referring to like how long ago or anything. Oh, some years ago there was, you know, a meeting with my dad and all us. But uh, I don't know. We, we talk pretty often, so I figure we'll talk at some point. Uh, Chris, over the last few weeks, it seems like the younger guys or the younger group have kind of been a spark in a few of these games. I know Coach Kerr has said that a few times. But in those weeks, when asked about it, they always say that you are a vocal leader in the locker room, on the floor. What is it that you're like saying to them to keep them ready? Because obviously, like you said, J.K. was very professional. He said he had to be ready when his name was called. And they credit you for a lot of uh, that, that leadership. That, that ain't me. You know what I mean? I'm obviously always talking about things that I see or um, – you know, we I think we got a great balance of young guys and veteran guys who sort of know situations, but you need those young guys who just going in there playing with reckless abandon. You know, Moe's energy early in the game, BP, what he's done for us off the bench, and you saw what JK had a, had a chance to do tonight. So I think the great balance and blend of both is, is what has the opportunity to make our team special. Chris, Steve said, you know, approaching the quarter mark of the season, the puzzle still hasn't fit. He said the rotation honestly might have to be a night to night basis. He even said the starting lineup might have to be on a night to night basis. How is that is that difficult and, and how just how is that being twenty games into the season and starters rotation, all of it kind of seems up Just to trying to stay ready. You know, whatever whatever it is, just uh, I think this new for a lot of people, for everybody on our team. So just trying to stay ready. How critical is Jonathan against a team like this, against many teams who are young and long and athletic? And it seems like that's what Jonathan brings. I mean, how, how he, essential is he to what you're doing, I guess? He, he's very essential. But this league, it changes every night. Every team plays you a different way. This team was switching screens. Then you're going to play against a team with a guy like Jokic. Then you're going to play against, um, you know, we're going to OKC. You know, every team plays differently. so. Uh, in order to be successful, you got to have different ways that you, you can play, and that's why this team has been good for so long. Chris, you just said it felt good to win. Obviously, being at home gives you that upper hand with your fan base. How are you going to just work either on your mentality and also your physical goal for the next four games that are going to be the hard games away from home? Just get ready for them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Is there anything that you th – you've done in the past that has helped you, like, for example, for a game like tonight that you will want to do again? Or is there something else that you think, hey, maybe I need to work more on this, either on your mentality more than just your physical? Not really. Um, uh, I think our, our first unit is trying to get us off to, to better starts. You know what I mean? So we um, just come out with a with an energy, and I think you know the unit that I'm playing. We we just trying to come in and change the game, pick up the tempo, and, and get stopped. So, I think for us, uh, we still trying to sort of figure out our identity, and once we do that, we'll be all right. Chris, you've been doing this a few years. Um, mm. Do you do you enjoy seeing a young player like like Jonathan, who the last couple of years have been. You know, learning. He was young when he got here and, and still just learning how he fits into a team and, and developing that professionalism that you just spoke of and seeing him kind of wait and then capitalize on, on a, an opportunity there when he wasn't even supposed to be in the rotation tonight. Yeah, we talk a lot. You know, Mo had a situation like that in SAC, you know, where, you know, people didn't realize – you know, and he came in and he played big in that game and we, we almost won. JK, we just always talk about, uh, you know, longevity and and staying ready, you know. And I know it's tough for him at times because he see a lot of guys that he came into the league with playing high minutes night in and night out. But I just try to talk to him about the long game. You know, you get a chance to play with a, a lot of guys here. You get to see what the work looks like day in and day out. and. I mean, I didn't seen a lot of guys in this league have a good three-year run, two-year run, and then they out of the league. So, the fact that he's got a chance to see Steph, Clay, Dre, Loon day in and day out, um, that's that's something that sometimes you you don't appreciate 
you know, but I, I think he, he, he understands how important that is. And that, that early in the fourth, fourth when um, Dario has a, a three and then a layup kind of in a short amount of time there with, with you guys, um, how much did that sort of spark and get the momentum to, to rally in the fourth? Uh, like I that? think it helped. Um, when you talk about first unit, second unit or whatnot, every night it's, it can be different. That's why you're a team. You know, if they don't got it going, we might have to pick them up and, and vice versa. And that's that's a sign of, of good teams and what you have to do. One more question about Adam. <laughs> I got to ask. <clears throat> he said that, you know, you guys obviously don't have to be friends, but that you guys should be able to be professional and work through it and be able to do your jobs. Do you feel like, I mean, is that good to hear? Does that matter to you or do you? Um... I mean, I know I ain't no saint, you know what I mean? I know, you know, what I can do or say or something like that during the game, but I'm, I'm always going to go out to do my job. It's just, you know, he got the ability to, to change how I play my, you know, it, but that's a whole nother story. I'm, I'm always going to go out and, and compete as, as hard as I, I possibly can and um, not try to be in a position where I'm getting ejected because that's going to hurt my team, you know, and, yeah, I'm the only text I got this season so far. That's pretty good for me. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Chris. Yeah.